Yes. Good morning, students. Okay. So in the last class, we started a topic called mutual induction. Right. So we started a topic called mutual induction. So what we discussed, I think, basics done. Right. Just a quick revision. Then we'll go into the topic. So what is that? So we can say two coils or we can say one coil. We can say two coils. In one coil, the current is developed, right? So in the other coil, current is developed or induced current is developed. Induced current is developed in this coil. So we didn't connect to any battery. So we connect it to a galvanometer. So it will calculate the current, right? So what, what is happening here? So due to this battery, what will happen? Will be developed here. So due to this current, what will happen? Magnetic field will be developed here. So due to that magnetic field, what will happen? Change in the magnetic field lines will be there in the other coil. As I know, so due to that change, what will happen? Induced EMF will be developed and induced current also will be developed in the other coil. That phenomenon we call it as mutual induction. Right? So actually, we have seen all these things. We can say two coils, a number of terms N1, N2. Right, so magnetic field in which coil it is developed in the first coil, magnetic field is developed due to that magnetic field. What happened? Change in the flux linkages happens in the second coil, change in the flux in which coil in the second coil. So, in which coil due to that change in the flux, induced EMF developed in the second coil. So, due to that induced EMF, induced current will be developed in the second coil. Right, this phenomenon we call it as mutual induction. Right. So what is the story? So tell me, formulas, try to think. So as soon as well, you can revise it for a minute. So tell me what I can write. So induce the EMF. Again, uh, flux is directly proportional to current again. Principally same. So flux is directly proportional to current. So current in what loop? In first loop or in second loop? In first coil or in second coil? So in the first coil. So current, so I'm writing it as I1. I1 indicates current in the first coil. So change in the flux in the second coil. So net change in the flux, if you want, you can write it as N2 phi 2 is directly proportional to I1. So if I remove this proportional, you will get a proportionality constant, right? So I can write it as M times of I1, where M is coefficient of mutual inductance or coefficient of mutual induction, right? So coefficient of mutual inductance, right? So M I can write as it is N2 phi 2 divided by I1, right? Is that clear about the point? So the current in which coil in the first coil. So changing the flux in the second coil. So how much is that? We can calculate N2 phi 2 is directly proportional to the current in the first coil. So I can write N2 phi 2 equals to M into I1. So M equals to N2 phi 2 by I1, right? So now, what is the induced DMF in the second coil? How much induced DMF is developed? So according to the Faraday's law, I can write as minus d phi by dt, right? So change in the flux. I can calculate flux from here. So n number of turns are there in the sense. We can write it as uh, minus n times of d phi by dt. We know. If number of turns are 1, then n value will be 1. If number of turns are there, n1, n2, I can set. So that will be n d phi by dt, right? So what I can write now, E equals to minus D by DT of, can I write as flux linkages at one plus N5? So in terms of N5, now I can write as N times of, I generally I'm writing, I'm writing generally N5, which is equals to M into I, I'm writing. So we know this one and two, so you can uh, write it, right? So generally, which is equals to some constant into I. So this is the generalized equation, right? Okay, so instead of N5, I can write it as Mi. So E, which is equals to minus D by DT of, right? M times of I, right? Visible? Yes. So next step, no. So now M constant we can throw out. So finally, what is induced DMF? E equals to M, I have thrown out. So minus M, so D I by DT. So this is the induced DMF in the other coil. This is the induced EMF in the other coil. Minus indicates we know that is opposition. Induced EMF or induced current always it opposes the cause. Right? So E equals to minus M DI by DT. So this is about induced EMF. Likewise, 
So mutual induction, self induction again the same thing will get or not. So e equals to minus L di by dt here e equals to minus L di by dt. But the concept is little different. Their current and that phenomenon that induced the EMF, that phenomenon will be in the same coil. Now here current in the other coil, induced the EMF in the other coil. Right? Clear about the point? So this is just basic. Now, now mutual induction we will calculate uh, in solenoids, right? Mutual induction SI unit is also Henry. So L and M SI units are Henry, right? What is that? Henry. Induce the MF and the self inductance are the same. Equal when di by dt should be unity. Di by dt value, if it is one, so theoretical questions, chances will be there. If di by dt value is equals to one, then the magnitude of induced DMF and as well as self inductance and as well as mutual inductance value will be same. E equals to m di by dt e equals to l di by dt. Right now, uh, we'll see mutual induction in solenoids. Why I said solenoids? Two solenoids we have to consider, like uh, in the previous case, we have to consider one solenoid. We have to consider two solenoids, right? So we'll consider two solenoids and we'll try to calculate the mutual inductance in the both the coils, right? So one, if I do another one, you can try. It's easy, right? So consider two coils, two solenoids, two coils in a sense, two solenoids, right? This is the first one. So assume from here it is taking a turn for that uh, I am considering right. So this conductor I am extending up to here. So from here what happened see. First solenoid, right? So first solenoid, S1. Can I name it as S1? S1. First solenoid. Next, second one. So two solenoids we have to consider, right? So second one. So zoom from here I can sit, right? So from here I can sit. Assume it is coming like this, right? So now. Okay, so can I consider like this? So this is S2, second solenoid, right, clear about the point, so first solenoid, okay, and this is the second solenoid, okay, second solenoid, so two solenoids, S1 and S2, so assume the length of the solenoid, two solenoids the same, so length, L1 equals to L2, and area of the cross section also I am assuming it as same. Area of the cross section of the two solenoids is same, and the length of the cross length of the two solenoids will be same, and area of the cross section is also same. So I can set two solenoids. Right. Now what to calculate? Mutual inductance we have to calculate. Right. So for that, so now tell me what is mutual inductance value zero? Why current is not there? If current is not there, no induced EMF and will be developed. So current should be there in any one of the coils. Right. So now in S1, I'm considering the current I, right? So in S1, I'm considering the current I is started flowing. So if it is started flowing in the sense, what will happen? Tell me. So change in the magnetic field will be there in the second coil, right? 
So we have to calculate that. So current I or I will cancel it as I1. I1 because S1 I1 terms will be same. So number of terms n and n to in the second solenoid. All right. So now I'm trying to calculate mutual inductance. Mutual inductance in the second coil in the solenoid to S2 direct. Y2, Y2, Y2. Okay. So in S2, because of the current in S1. Visible? Right. So in S2, because of the current in S1. So due to the current in the S1, so what happened? Mutual inductance in S2 developed. So how it is developed and all? We'll see, right? So mutual inductance of the second solenoid because of the first solenoid. I am representing it as M21. What do you mean by this M21? Mutual inductance in the second solenoid because of the current in the first solenoid. All right. So now current is there in the first solenoid. In the sense, magnetic field developed in which solenoid? In the first solenoid. So magnetic field developed in S1. So how much? So B, which is equals to, we know the formula mu naught Ni, right? So we know the formula, which is B equals to mu naught Ni. So what is the current? So number of terms we consider it as N1. Small n1, I can write it as number of terms per unit length. We know this formula, right? So number of terms per unit length is nothing but small n. So I can write it as magnetic field in the first solenoid which is equals to mu naught n1 length of the both i consider it as same so i can write it as l1 equals to l2 equals to l and a1 equals to a2 equals to a right so l1 divided by l into i right so this is magnetic field developed in which solenoid in the first solenoid here some confusions will be there please try to be clear okay so current in which solenoid in the first solenoid Due to that current in that solenoid, magnetic field is developed. In what solenoid? In the first solenoid again. Due to that magnetic field, change in flux developed in which coil? In the second coil or in the second solenoid. Magnetic field developed in the first solenoid. Due to that magnetic field, change in the flux developed in which coil? In the second coil. Now, change in flux in S2. Change in flux. In S2, what is the formula of change in flux? So flux which is equals to BA, cos theta again theta 0, cos 0 is 1. So flux is B into A. Right. So calculate flux in what solenoid? In 2. So I'm writing it as 5, 2. Mag the second solenoid due to magnetic field in the first solenoid and area of the cross section of the second solenoid. How much flux is developed? How much flux developed depends on magnetic field in the first solenoid and the area of the second solenoid. Now I'm two area of area of the cross section of the second solenoid and magnetic field developed in the first solenoid. So phi two I can write as b one into a two. Okay. So phi two which is equal to what is b one? It is mu naught l one i one divided by l and area of the cross section of the two solenoids I consider it as same, so I am writing it as A. But in generally it should be A2. Okay, generally it should be A2. So this is the flux. Okay, this is the flux, right? So change in the flux in S2. Now coming to the principle of the mutual induction. This will here, right? Right. Okay, so can I rub something? What else? Okay, now. So flux we can come to the mutual induction. What is the story? So flux is directly proportional to current. Flux in what? Flux in what? Flux in the other coil is directly proportional to the current in the first coil, according to the given story. So phi 2 which is directly proportional to I1. So net flux we want. So it is M2 phi 2 which is equals to M21 into I1. Y21 mutual inductance on the second one because of the current in the first loop. So M21 into I1. 
Clear about the point? All right. So N two phi two. So if I want to calculate M two one, I can write as N two phi two by I one. So N two one, which is equals to. So phi two we know. Phi two we know. We can substitute. So substitute. So instead of phi two, so N two. Next phi two it is mu naught L one, right? I one divided by L. Into a and again in the denominator I one, so I one and I one cancel. So finally m two one, which is equals to mu naught n one n two and uh, a divided by l. So this is the mutual inductance on because of the current in the first solenoid. It is mu naught n one n two a by l. If number of terms are same, you can write it as m square a by l, right? So if you want to write in terms of number of uh, terms per unit length, in terms of small n, you can write, okay? So this is the basic thing. So m to one, which is equal to mu naught n one n two a divided by l. So for example, if a is filled in the solenoid, okay, this is correct. If uh, there is no a, there is other material uh, having relative permeability in that solenoid, then we have to change this formula. Understood the point? What I said. If it is air-filled solenoid, then this is the formula. If there is, I think, in magnetism and matter, we have said in the solenoid, if we uh, place any material which is having the relative permeability, then this formula will change. It depends on the stories. We can change this formula, but basic formula is same. If number of terms are same, I can write as a uh, uh, mu naught n square a by l. If the question is there in terms of uh, number of terms per unit length, number of terms. Per unit length, so n equals to number of terms per unit length, right? In terms of n, if a uh, uh, question is there, then n divided by l. Clear about the point? Can I multiply and divide with l? So multiply and divide with l. So what you'll get? N square, nothing but small n square. So I can write it as mu naught n square a into l. I can write it as volume, right? Area and length. We call it as volume. For example, if any uh, relative permeability material is there inside, then what will be the mutual induction in the sense? Uh, I can write m two one, which is equals to mu naught mu r n one n two a divided by l. Right? Clear about the point. So these are the different formulas you have to remember if you want to do the problems. So according to the concept, this is the concept. So what we calculated now, we calculated the mutual inductance in S two. So because of the current in S one. So reverse concept now. Please try to uh, remember that m two one value. I did it by heart, so I'm writing here. Okay. So mu naught n one n two a divided by l. We got it as m two one. Now pause the video and start doing for mutual inductance in S one because of the current in S two. Understood the story. So what we have to do now? Pause the video and start doing. What is that? Mutual inductance in S1 because of the current in S2. Two current in S2. Mutual inductance developed in S1. Now I want that value. Stop the video. Start doing and check your answer after doing. Right. So. Assumptions are same. Nothing I am changing, but current direction I am changing. So instead of the current, what we consider in S1, now we will consider in S2. We will consider in S2. So the current is I2. We will consider it as I two. Okay, so current is I two. Right now, start. So current in I two in the sense magnetic field developed in the solenoid two. So how much magnetic field developed in the solenoid two? So which is B two, which is equals to. So we know the formula mu naught y i. Right. So current we can say it as I two and number of terms n two. So I can write it as mu naught n two I two divided by L two, where L two and L one both are same. So I am writing it as L. 
So now change in flux in what solenoid? Change in flux in solenoid two or solenoid one. So pi one. So change in flux due to magnetic field in the second solenoid. Yes or no? Magnetic field in the second solenoid and area of the cross section of the first solenoid. So pi one, which is equals to what is b two? It is mu naught n two i two divided by l into a. Why? Because area of the cross section is also same. So I am writing it as a. So this is the flux linked in the first coil. Now, according to the principle of the mutual induction, what I can write? Flux in the first coil change in the flux is directly proportional to what? The current in the second solenoid. Is clear about the point? So now net flux we have to write. So number of turns n1 pi1, which is equals to I can write it as uh, m12. Can I write now? Why? Right? Because m21 we used in the previous concept. Now I am writing it as mutual inductance developed in the first coil because of the current in the second coil. So into I2, right? So what we have to calculate now M12, which is equals to M1 phi1 divided by I2, right? So phi1 value we know substitute here and try to calculate. Simple. I think the same uh, formula we will get again. Those who got the same formula like M21 and M12, that is correct, right? So M12. So N1 as it is. Right, so phi one. So how much is that? It is n two i two upon l into a. Right, visible? Yes. So m one two n one mu naught n two i two by l into a. So therefore, m one two I can write as mu naught n one n two i two area divided by l. And here in the denominator, i two is there. We miss right. So I two I two will be cancelled. So here I two term won't come. So this will be the final mutual inductance developed in the first solenoid because of the current in the second solenoid. So what is the equation? Same equation, sir. Not you not n one n two a by l. So therefore I can tell m two one which is equals to m one two. Right. So mutual inductance on the second one by the first, which is equal to mutual inductance um, by the first on the second. So both will be same. Mutual inductance on the second one by the current in the first, or mutual inductance on the first by the current in the second. Both are same. We proved. So therefore, I can write m to one, which is equal to m one two. Right. Try to remember the formulas important for the problems. Right. Clear about the point. This is about mutual induction. Is about Mutual induction. First, the uh, current is there uh, in that coil or in that solenoid. You have to calculate the magnetic field. Due to that magnetic field, flux linkage develops in the other coil. You have to cancel. If you want to calculate the flux magnetic field, okay, where the current is there, that magnetic field and area of the cross section of the other coil or the other solenoid where the flux linkage developed. That area of the cross section you have to consider. Most of the students will be confused here. Uh, sir, B two A two will write no B two A one. Here area of the cross section is same, so it might be little easy. If area of the cross section is different, then this term will comes into consideration. If length is also different, then these terms will comes into consideration. Very important, right? Clear about the point? Here also, what is this L? L one or L two? If both are not same, so what is this L? L one or L two? L two. What is this? A one or A two? A one. Right? Please try to write properly. Clear about the point? So this is about mutual induction in the solenoids and the general principle. All right. So next concept. This is some general concepts now. Uh, the last concept called AC generator. Later. So one more concept also I left here: eddy currents. We will discuss the eddy currents in AC current next chapter. Then it will be easy. In the chapter alternating current, if I tell eddy currents, you can understand it easily. Why? Because uh, there, what will happen is the two magnets will be there. In between, one metallic plate will oscillate. by oscillating what will happen if you understand alternating current basic part then if i tell about the eddy currents then it will be easy for you okay only one topic i left so uh, remaining topics we will 
try to complete it today. Okay, we'll try to complete it. Okay, some general concepts we'll see now. General concepts. Okay, so we'll see some general concepts. What is the general concept? See, so while studying about an inductor, so I said I will compare with the capacitor. So we'll try to compare capacitor and an inductor for some time. Okay, so no need to compare with resistor. So in resistor, current will be constant. So if you connect to a battery, a resistor, then what will happen? Constant current will flow. So no need to discuss that much, that much about the resistor, right? Now, so why particularly about the capacitor and inductor? Tell me. So for example, if a capacitor connected to a battery, what will happen? If an inductor connected to a battery, what will happen? Right? If a capacitor connected to a battery or an inductor connected to a battery, what will happen actually? Right. So, if capacitor is connected to a battery at a time t equals to 0, how much current will flow in the circuit? My question. At time t equals to 0, battery is connected or not? So, potential difference V or EMF if you want, you can write it as V. Okay? So, at time t equals to 0 here and at time t equals to 0 here, what will happen? I think in capacitor topic, uh, I said two concepts. One is before steady state and after steady state in capacitors. Before steady state, what will happen? The current will vary in the circuit. After steady state, nothing will happen. Current will be zero. Why it is zero? Try to understand the point. At time t equals to zero, current is I. At time t equals zero, current is I. I will flow or not? Yes, definitely I will be there. So now if time increases, if time increases, what will happen to the current in the circuit if a capacitor is placed? Current decreases. Why current? If current is going in the sense some charging particles will go, right? So if charging particles will go in the sense, if plates are there in the sense, those charging particles will be stored in the plates. So what will happen? Some charges are stored in the plates and the remaining will move. So next, 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 what will happen? So the charges, what will be stored in the plates increases such that the current decreases. Such that the current decreases. So at time increases, what will happen? Current decreases. The decrease in the current, where it went? Where it went? It went in the form of charges which is stored in the capacitor. Which is stored in the capacitor. Right? Clear about the point? So we can tell at time t equals to infinity, i which is equals to zero. In a sense, so if uh, the capacitor is completely charged, if the capacitor is completely charged, now the circuit will act like open circuit. When, when it will act like open circuit, if the capacitor should be completely charged or not? Completely charged. If the capacitor is completely charged, then the circuit will act like open circuit. So initially at time t equals to zero, the circuit will act like the closed circuit. So capacity is there, but we won't cancel the capacitor because so it will act like closed the circuit. So at time t equals to this time we can calculate just an assumption I consider it as in i equals to t equals to infinity, i value is zero. So at that instant, what will happen? The circuit will act like open circuit. This is the thing what we discussed earlier. Okay. So now in the inductor, so what will happen in the inductor? So, can you say an inductor connected to a battery at time t equals to zero? What will happen? At time t equals to zero, what will happen? So, here initially current I will flow, just reverse, reverse function. Nothing okay, simple. We know that. So, at time t equals to zero, current will be zero. At time t equals to zero, current will be zero. Why current is zero? So, slowly the current will move, and at time t equals zero, slowly if current went here. Uh, change something should be there. If change is not there, then what will happen? No induced current will be there, no induced EMF will be there. So at time t equals 0, current will be equals to 0. Now, if time increases, current will increase or not? Yes or no? So change in the magnetic field will be developed or not? So opposition will be developed or not? So if opposition develops, induced EMF will be developed, so induced current also increases. Right? So here t equals 0, i equals i. So t increases, current decreases. Now here t equals 0, i value is 0. If current increases, the time increases, what will happen? Current increases. Just because constant. 
just was concerned. So at time whatever the current in the circuit will be equals to the current in reduced current in the coil. Right? And the time will come. So we can calculate all those times. So for example, if you want to calculate how we can calculate is this connecting wire is having some resistance or not. That resistance also we have to consider. So those circuits we call it as LR circuits. So we can calculate. So at a time t equals to 2 seconds, what is the current? In the circuit, we can calculate at end equals to five seconds. What is the current in the circuit? We can calculate how we can calculate. See here. So LR circuits, in a sense, what is L? Inductor. What is R? It is resistor. Why? Because connecting wires are there. If connecting wires are there, some resistance will be there. So I consider inductor, which is connected to a battery. First connected to a resistance of a resistor of resistance R, inductance L. Now connected to a Better. Now we will try to discuss the concept value if you want we can derive or else we will close it is not board level do not worry about that. Okay, So inductance L and resistance are connected to a battery a potential difference you can write it as B. Okay. So now we studied what we studied in current electricity if uh, two components are there in happen it will divide or not. So potential across the inductor, I am considering it as V1 and potential across the resistor, I am considering it as V2. So I can write it as V equals to V1 plus V2. Can I write? So whatever the potential difference is there in the battery, it is taken by the two components. So one is inductor and the other one is resistor. Or resistance R. So I can write V which is equals to V1 plus V2. I am not telling it is equally divided. We don't know. So if you add the two, you will get the potential difference in the battery. Now, what we can write V, which is equals to what is V1? V1, V1 is nothing but induced EMF in the coil. What is induced EMF formula? It is L di by dt. Minus is there, that minus indicates supposition. We know that. So only the magnitude I am considering. So it is L di by dt plus V2. What is the potential across the resistor? We know it as IR. Right? So current in the circuit assume it as I. So it is IR. Clear about the point? So by uh, solving this equation, at whatever the time it might be, Niti, we have to integrate. Whatever the time it might be, we can calculate the current in the circuit. Right? First, try to understand up to here. If you want, we will derive that. Don't worry. Okay. Easy. Okay. So if I cancel a capacitor, what will happen? Initial current equals zero, slowly current decreases and it will become zero. It lacks like open circuit. Now, if I cancel inductor, initial current will be how much? Zero. Initial current will be zero. So, if time increases, what will happen? Current will increase. For example, at uh, some time, what will be the current in the circuit at all? If, I, if they ask to calculate, we have to do like this. So, reverse concept of capacitor is what? Inductor. Conceptually. So, here also I think we calculated. Now, what is the charge at a given time? What is the current in the circuit at a given time? We can calculate or not? What is the charge? Q equals to Q naught into 1 minus e to the power minus t by tau. Tau is the time constant already we discussed, right? So, for example, if I ask the charge Q equals to Q naught into 1 minus e to the power minus t by tau, if I want to calculate the current I equals to I naught into e to the power minus t by tau, the same thing, the same thing. Here also we will get exponentially, it will vary again. Here also we will get exponential terms only. So at some time, what is the charge? We can calculate Q0 is the maximum charge and I0 is the maximum current. V0 by R we can write. Okay, if resistance is there in the circuit. This we call it as RC circuits. Before steady state. Point to be noted. What is that? Before steady state. After steady state, in the board level already we have seen what is the potential difference across the, the charge stored in the capacitor. All those problems come under after steady state. Before steady state, these equations we have to use. Here also. Right? So if I can say LR circuits here, so we have to use with the concept. This concept I think we know. So from this, we have to derive it. If you want, we'll see for a minute and we'll try to close this concept. Okay. Right? At some time, what is the current in the circuit? If they ask, so how to calculate? Right? 
so v equals to v1 plus v2 so try to calculate ir will come this side so v minus ir which is equals to l di by dt can i write is it okay right so next constants throughout and we have to integrate right so constants i can write v minus ir okay so here i is there so in terms of i we have to integrate so we can write dt here and we can't integrate like that okay so what i will write is i terms will go to i side and t terms to the other side so what i am writing is l will go to the other side 1 by l into dt which is equals to di divided by v minus i r can i write like this right so di i terms and v can be that side or it can be this side no problems in that okay so now at time dt current in the circuit is di small amount of the current in small amount of time now we have to integrate this if you integrate this we will get the answer so initial current is zero and final current is i so initial current zero at time t equals to zero and current is i at time t limits so current zero at time zero current is i at time t right so try to derive so this is in the form of uh, integral 1 by x into dx so i am assuming this complete term as i now integration by substitution method so i can consider it as i 1 by i di is nothing but log i log x here so here we call it as log i so log so what we assume it as i first time writing that so it is v minus i r divided by what we assumed it as i we have to differentiate in the denominator rule we have to differentiate with respect to what again with respect to i so it is v minus i r this we call as integration by substitution method so first what you have to do you have to assume it as i so 1 by i di is log i right so log i so where i is v minus i r now what we assumed we have to differentiate in the denominator Respect to what? With respect to what variable we are doing integration? With respect to the same variable, we have to differentiate it again. So it is v minus i. Right. So which is equals to other side one by l constant rod integral dt is t t minus zero is t. So here limits we have to apply right zero to i. Right. So we can't write here. So complete thing. It is zero to. So we can apply in the denominator also. Why I applied only for numerator is so see potential is constant, V value is constant. It depends on the battery; it will be constant. Differentiation of any constant zero. And d by d i of i r differentiation d by r is constant. Proved. So d by d i of i is one. So with this, I can replace with what? This is zero. D by d i of i is one. So it will be minus r. So finally, one by L into T, which is equals to first upper limit, difference to the top lower limit. So where we have to substitute this I in terms of I, and again it will be zero. So first upper limit log of, so constant first row. So what is the constant? Minus R. Constant, right? No need to apply any limits. No. So I first in terms of I. So it will be log of V minus I R minus difference to the top lower limit. We know. Right, log place of what in the place of i. So this term will be zero. So it will be log v. Okay. So now what we have to calculate? What we have to calculate? What I said. So we have to calculate the current. So we can calculate or not? Yes. I is there. So log m minus log n. I can write as log m by n. So it is log of v minus i r divided by v. So constant terms I am throwing to the other side, so it is minus R T divided by L. So if I remove log, you will get uh, exponential right e to the power. So continuing here, so I am writing it as e to the power minus R T divided by L, which is equals to V minus I R divided by D. If you want to calculate I, what I can do? V by V is one minus I R divided by D. So I R by V, which is equals to one minus e to the power minus R T divided by L. So what I am trying to calculate now I. So I, which is equals to remaining terms, so the other side V by R, one minus e to the power minus R T divided by L. So this is the value of the current in the circuit at any time. V is constant, R is constant. 
and one minus exponential again r is constant l is constant in 2 seconds what is the current right is it clear about the story i think this is just calculation but don't worry about this so basic concept it should be clear if it is clear then you can calculate it easily right so this is about the inductor story complete inductor story right so at any time how to calculate if it is mutual inductance if it is self inductance how to calculate it all we discussed right so one more a small concept is there we'll i try to close today's class that concept so uh, we started doing inductors we we'll try to complete the inductors part okay so what is that uh, up to now we can say only one inductor and we try to calculate uh, either uh, two inductors if i consider we calculated the self induction mutual induction if one inductor if i consider we calculated uh, self induction if uh, inductor and a resistor is there how to calculate the current in the circuit now for example if two inductors point important right if two inductors connected in series first and in parallel both we will see okay so if inductors if two or more inductors just like or more also we can cancel but uh, just a simple case we are doing with two inductors two or more also you can cancel connect in series and as well as in parallel what will happen how to calculate the effective inductance right Uh, in resistors, we have seen the effective resistance. We calculate or not? If uh, two resistors are connected in series, R one plus R two, connected in parallel, one by R one plus one by R two, like capacitors. Two capacitors are connected in series. Reverse, one by C one plus one by C two. Two capacitors are connected in parallel, C one plus C two. Likewise, here in the inductor, for example, series first. If two inductors connected in series to a battery. Right of EMF E, right EMF E. So what will happen? So this already we have seen in the previous concept. If I cancel the potential difference, it will be divided. Now if I cancel EMF which is E or potential which is V, so it will be divided. So E one here and E two here. Clear? And inductance assume L one and L two. Self I am considering it as L1 and L2. I can cancel mutual inductance also in the next class. We can see that. So net EMF we have tried. If I cancel mutual, self will be developed individually, and as well, this one by this one, and on this one by this one, right? So four terms we will get. Now present we will get only two terms. If I cancel that mutual inductance also in the sense we will get four terms. So we will see in the competitive classes, or uh, if time permits, tomorrow after the completion of the uh, syllabus. This chapter I will tell. Okay, so now what I can write E, which is equals to E one plus E two. So E, which is equals to what is E one? It is L di by dt. L in the sense I give it as L one plus L two di by dt. So E I can write as it is L di by dt. So di by dt, di by dt, di by dt cancel. So what I can write L effective this one. So the L effective I can write as L1 plus L2. Like series and parallel, the ratio also same. Then also we wrote it as V equals V1 plus V2, right? Then we can write as I1. So what is the current? Current is constant there. So I wrote it as I R1 plus I R2. I cancel. So R equals to R1 plus R2. Here also same. But instead of considering I and R, here use the M of V cancel, which is L1 into DI by DT. Apart from that, nothing is simple. So what is effective EMF if they ask? So I can write as L1 plus L2. If n number of uh, conductors connected in series plus and so on, what is there in that? Right? So parallel. Understand the concept? Concept. Try try to understand the concept. Calculation part you can do it, right? So EMF divided into two parts. Here induce the EMF in E1, induce the EMF in E2. If you add these two, net EMF will get. That's it. So now parallel. So one inductor connected in parallel to the another inductor, right? So connected to a battery of EMF E. So what will happen here? So EMF will be same for these two. Then what is different? Current is different. What is different? Current will be different. 
So if current is different, then what I can do? I which is equals to I one plus I two. Can I write? Yes, hello. So I which is equals to I one plus I two. So now induced EMF. If it is same, so what I can write? E equals to L D I by D T. Can I write? Right? Induced EMF the same. Induced EMF. This is the concept in parallel. This is the concept in parallel. Now according to here, D I by D T should be the same. Get the point? So what I can write? So D I by D T. Change is important, no? So if it is parallel, this is the actual concept. But according to inductors, what should by D T which is equals to D I one by D T plus D I two by D T. What should be same again? E will be same. E here the same E the same E. But what will be different? Current will be different. So generally, if there is a resistance concept, I can write I equals to I one plus I two. But here induced E M F. In a sense, the change in the current we have to concentrate. So I can write as D I by D T equals to D I one by D T plus D I two by D T. Right now, D I by D T formula is E by L. So try to write D I by D T. I can write as E by L effective, which is equals to D I one by D T. So L one, L two. D I one by D T is nothing but E M F is same. Inductance is L one. And uh, here E divided by L. So E will be cancelled. So one by L effective. I can write as L one. All right. Basic concept again. Here again, mutual inductance we can consider. Mutual inductance we can consider. I did it consider in the next class. We will try to see that. Okay. So series and parallel. Only self induction. I didn't consider a topic called mutual induction here in this topic. But we can consider here to. Okay. In the next class, we'll see that. Thank you.